نهاض علي مظهر العجائب اوكي اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا مولانا حبيب الله العالمين ابو القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى ال بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المذنومين ولا اعط الله على القوم الظالمين من الان الى يوم الدين ما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ان شاء الله all of you are doing well um, it's a pleasure to have you here عيد مبارك again uh, to everyone who is listening um, especially if you're listening after today's the day of Eid and so those of you who have taken time to join the book club thank you so much alhamdulillah um, I hope it can be fruitful now I you know the truth is I'm hungry and I'm in a house right now where there is food so but my, the priority is of course the book club but if you see me rushing along uh, I assure you my intentions are purely um, to taste the fruit of uh, Eid <laughs> now we have been going through many different topics with regards to this book club and last week we said we want to discuss taqwa um, it is the next topic that we're, we're interested in, okay? And it became relevant to us because when we looked at things like the Asul al-Din, like Tawheed and Nabuat and Imamat and, and Ma'ad and, and other principles like um, this dunya or even politics, we looked at Adal and all of these issues, um, we have set for ourselves a vision of how the Imam wants us to live. Yeah, it's the Imam wants us to live a certain way. That being the case, I might not be at that level. I might not be there. And there are many things happening in my life which prevent me from being steadfast and true and honest in this path, okay? So then the question is, well, what do I do? How do I live the type of life where I am strong and I'm firm, you know, in, in this path? And taqwa, God wariness or God fear um, or being aware of God mainly, is a very good solution. In fact, it's the solution to that problem. But the way that Imam Ali Islam describes it in Nahj al Balagha is very different to how we see taqwa described in other places. Inshallah, in today, I'm going to discuss a, um, a perspective of Imam Ali Islam in, in Nahj al Balagha of taqwa, which is different. And that's a principle of taqwa as a vaccine. Okay? Uh, this idea which many of you might be thinking, this sounds very familiar in the news that we have, vaccinations and illnesses. Yes, that language is known. And as Shaykh Mutahri explains, when we look at Nahj al-Balagha, taqwa is described as something which you use to immunize yourself against this world, against sins, against desires, and you find yourself using taqwa, becoming healthier. And the language used is so similar to that which we're surrounding ourselves with today in our current climate. The, the language of vaccine and booster and top up and immune um, and even to some degree in social distancing. These concepts have their own spiritual language, which we see in Nahj al And something which Shaykh Mutahari does very well for us in reading these different sermons and putting them together is he makes a kind of approach to um, taqwa from Nahj al which is different to how we might be used to it. Now, for the reading for today, I did mention if we look at Sermon 195, this will come up later, but there are a number of different sermons and sayings which I have used and brought them together for this discussion, okay? So let me just double check and see if there are any questions. Okay, if there's any issues that come up, um, please do mention them, inshallah. Um, what I'll do is I will go through uh, this section in Nahj and I will pause at certain points where you might have some thoughts and I will ask if you have any thoughts, please feel free to share them, inshallah. But about this, about this, um, does someone want to unmute and say something? Okay, I thought someone was unmuted. Um, yeah, uh, and just so you guys can't see, I have my nephews helping me in, in regulating today's conversation because I'm in their house. So um, a big shout out to Raza Ali Beg for helping so much with today's, today's book club. Raza, if you see someone who's unmuted accidentally, you can... Uh, you can mute them just if this mistake. Okay, let's begin. So the first thing that happens when it comes to taqwa and why we need god fearingness is that at some point you recognize that you're not well. Okay, at some point you realize that I'm sick. I'm not well. When you realize this, you focus on the needs to improve or to heal yourself. Now, there are many examples where I'm not well and I know I need a certain medicine. The spirit is the same as that. Sometimes there are certain maladies which come up 
which are problems in our own souls and we need a solution to them okay this idea of spiritual sickness is when you realize that i'm not well and there's a void in me there is an emptiness in me and i'm not well until i fill it with something now the problem of course is that people will tend to fill that void or that emptiness with um uh, with the wrong thing for example you may know, all of you know this sort of this famous verse Rahim, like la hafiddin khatta bayna rushtu min al ghayn fa may yakfur bit taghut wa yu'min billahi faqad istamsaqat al urwata um um urwata lan fi salam salamaha some people when they see this void this gap in them they fill it with taghut but the people who have iman and the people who have true faith are those who in that space, instead of ta'ud, put Allah in them. And for that reason, they become firm. They become, they can attach onto the habl, the rope of Allah with, with certainty and with strength. But the point is, the place where they place God was that same void which they didn't place ta'ud in. The verse says, whoever rejects, rejects ta'ud and then there's amana of Allah. Meaning at some point, they had a choice and they had a gap in them. And they could have chosen what to fill this gap with. And they chose Allah, they chose him. This idea, Ayatollah Mutahri expands and says, is when you notice in yourself there is some limitation or some problem in you, you need to then transition and go to the opposite. So if you have denial of Allah, you then need acceptance of Allah. You need to go the other direction. And that gives you a purpose. That gives you an aim in your life. That I, if I begin with la ilah, I have to end with illallah. I need to, I need to understand God to fill that void in me. And in that process is when we see problems in us and we might see issues in which that void in us is not for the sake of God. For example, we see symptoms of a hard heart, unable to have peace in prayer, unable to cry, tears, the dryness of the eyes, for example. Um, a lack of morale to do acts of spirituality and worship. So when, when this happens, we as individuals have a sickness in us. Or, for example, not having akhlaq, or not having honor amongst the people. What tends to happen is taqwa and having fear of God is the very solution to those problems. For example, I mentioned, I realized that, you know what, my akhlaq could be a lot better. Well, Imam Ali says in, in saying 41, taqwa ra'aysul akhlaq. Taqwa is the height of akhlaq. It is the zenith, the, the high point of your akhlaq, of your ethics, is your taqwa. Or for example, you might say, you know what, I don't have a lot of honor amongst the people. Well, in some three, saying 371, he says, min al -Islam. There's no sharaf on you greater than having Islam. No, no speciality on you. Wala azza na azza min al -taqwa. And there's no greater thing to give you honor among the people than having taqwa. That's what gives you honor. So the first step is, I see this problem to me. Now, someone might say that, you know what, I've not actually got any issues in me. I'm perfect or... Like this is nice, but truthfully, I do not need this. I'm not ill or sick. I'm not a problem. You know, I, I, I'm trying my best, but I've not got this issue in me where I need something. There's, not, there's no gap I can see that I must fill. The truth is we have to start off seeing ourselves very critically. In the same way that you might not identify an issue upon glance, but you go through an X-ray or an MRI or a series of examinations which show you what's inside which was hidden. For us, we need to be very scrutinative on ourselves and look at ourselves firmly. For example, we are told in a hadith from the Imam in Ashabalaga, in al mu'min yamsi ila nafsihu indahu. They are continuously pessimistic about themselves, meaning they're always questioning themselves, why did I do that? Why did I do this issue? Like, what's going on in me? Fala yazala zariyan alayha. And they are always trying to, demanding better from them and criticizing from them, laha, and wanting more from themselves. They're not content with having just a little bit. So, I, I see these illnesses because I know it's not enough. I can be so much better. And so when someone does praise me and say, look at how good you've done, I'm the same mentality. I'm looking for things I can improve. In fact, in saying 193, he says, if people come and praise you, what should you say? Say, I know more about myself than anyone else knows about me, that you're going to praise me for something. And my Lord knows more than I know about myself. So I'm not accepting any praise. Meaning, that if there's a problem, I'm going to identify it. Okay, so far, the point we've reached is we look for problems in ourselves and we see signs of sickness. That's the first step. Let me just pause and ask, has anyone got any questions or comments about the first stage of identifying a problem in yourself? Any questions or thoughts um, anyone want to add here?
can see someone's mic unmuted, but I can't hear you if that's just a concern. If, that, if that's not a point, that's fine. Has anyone got any points about the first part? Okay, step one, I've got a problem. And I identify, I see it in myself, okay? And I realize that I need to do something about it. Step two is that you see that taqwa is the solution to that problem. Taqwa by him, we mean having more fear of God, having more awareness of God, having more recognition of God. Like the very thing that's missing in me needs to be filled with recognizing God more. And that's taqwa. So in, um, in Nahjab al the Imam says, yeah, at one point he speaks to the people very clearly, he says to them, um, bima aqulu rahinatun wa ana bihi zaimun. What I'm about to say to you, he says, I, it's guaranteed and I'm answerable for what I'm about to say. So clearly it's important. What has he got to say? I'm speaking as someone, he says, who has experienced a lot and has seen many examples in the past of punishments which have happened to people before us now. These are musalat, these are examples for us. Had the taqwa, they would have been prevented if the people had taqwa. And to qahim al-shubuhat, which would stop them from falling into doubt. Allah, wa in wa in baliyatakum qad adat kahiyanatiha yoma ba'atha Allah ba'atha Allah hu Nabiyyu sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He says, this situation, the same troubles have come to you now, which existed when the first prophet was sent. Think about what he's saying. What do we see it's happening to people in the past? Floods. Plagues, earthquakes, the 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 sea um, swallowing up communities, the ground being shaken by by firm tremors, the sky being pelted down with rocks on communities. He says, "You know how it was then? It's the same thing now. I see the same thing in front of you." And the problem he says is, if they had taqwa, hajj the taqwa, an taqahum shabat, they would have stopped all of these doubts if they just had that fear, that recognition of God, that they know that Allah exists and that they have obligations to Him. If only they had that. And the scary part is, okay, we're lucky we have the mercy of the Holy Prophet to stop us from having these punishments on us now. But if we're exactly the same as Qawm Nuh, or Qawm Lut, Qawm Ibrahim, or Bani Israel, all these examples we have, we're in trouble. We're in trouble. And the same problem is going to face us, which means we need to find the solution. And the same sickness which was in those people, which made their hearts hard, for example, في قلوبهم مرضن, um, أو أشد قصوى, أو أشد قصوى, their hearts became stone. That problem could happen to me as well. And that's why the Imam continues. He says, أوسيكم عباد الله بتقوى الله. I advise you, I urge you, oh creatures of God, have taqwa. And you know that phrase? We see it a lot in, um, in, uh, in Jum'ah. We're told to say this, I advise you to have taqwa. And that's how the speaker begins the sermon. This is the sunnah of Ali bin Abi Talib and the Holy Prophet, where you begin by saying have taqwa. And if you imagine to yourself, right? So those of you who've been to Juma khutbas and you're listening and the, the scholar comes and he speaks and says, I'll seek my brother Allah, I urge you, my dear brothers and sisters, have taqwa. And then he gives a certain sermon. Imagine you're sitting in a gathering and Imam Ali comes and he says those same words and then speaks. What would it be like to hear a sermon from the Imam on this very same topic? Let me give you two examples to imagine what it would feel like to be in a gathering where the Holy Prophet has come to speak to you with, like this. In this case, Imam Ali salam. So the first example um, is sermon from, I think, 119. Where is he? Speaking to the people. He begins how? Just like how we always hear um, him beginning. I advise and urge all of you have taqwa. Indeed, this is a right upon all of you to have taqwa. Allah creates a huquq, a right on you. And first he gives a right upon you, and that means you have a right back to God. That's what taqwa is. It makes a link between you and Allah Azza wa Jal. And here's the most important part for us. taqwa fi yawmi hirzu wal jannah. Is like a protection and a shield. Taqwa for you is a shield. It guards you. It shields you from that which is external to you. What's a vaccine? A vaccine, similarly, is when you have something in you which internally prevents you from receiving or transmitting a certain illness. Right? It's an it's an internal invisible barrier within you. And it prevents you from being a carrier or a host or a spreader of a certain illness. Taqwa has a very similar function. 
in that the Imam said, it's like a shield for you. And then he continues. Uh, it becomes the path that you walk towards heaven. It is a clear, and the one who walks on it becomes further and further uh, in gain. Who walks the path of taqwa. So, imagine the imam is talking to you and says, I'll seek a mother life taqwa. I urge you to have taqwa. The first thing saying to you is, this thing I want you to have is a shield for you. It makes you stronger. It makes you have <clears throat> you didn't have before. And that's a thing, of course, um, to wish for oneself, right? There's another se section where he says that, where he says about taqwa. Um, it's in Sermon 114. Where the Imam is saying, I'll seek about Allah bi taqwa Allah. Allati hiya zadu biha al ma'ad. This thing I want you to have, it is your provision, which will also bring about your return back to me, back to Allah. Zadun, it is a provision for you. Mublirun wa ma'adun munhij. And once you have it, it will return you back to the place that you came from, the same path which you came from, in a state of success. The one who says this and repeats this is successful to the one who listens. And the one who actually practices on this is, is the better one as well. If you actually follow what I'm about to say to you. And the one who listens to the successful. And the most successful one is the one who actually practices what I'm saying to you. Have taqwa. Have fear of God. Let it. Let it govern the way that you walk and interact with the world. This is useful for you. So these two examples show to us that if we actually accept the help that God has given us, it guarantees to be of help to us. And as I mentioned just now, it's a shield. It's a shield which guards you. And like I said, you only need a shield when you're in danger. And you only need help when you're in trouble. And that's where we start off, seeing that I am in trouble. I am mubtala. I have done sins. I have a love for this dunya. I, I'm, I'm not always on the right path. I need something. And I see with my eyes, I'm, I'm, Ali is saying, I'm urging you to have taqwa. And I recognize it. And the second step is just to recognize what is the solution? What is the antidote to my, my misery? What is the medicine to my ailment? And it is having consistent, uh, cognizant recognition, knowledge of God being present. And that's the second step. Okay. Again, I will pause. And I would say, are there any questions about the second point where you know you're unwell, you know there's sickness in you, and now you've started to identify taqwa as the solution? Are there any thoughts or questions based on any of the segments I just read out? Uh, a nice metaphor which the imam uses to make this point very clear is that you are already, all of you, on a race in this world now how you choose to race and how you choose to proceed towards this nation is up to you and taqwa is that antidote to a long life spent for god not a long life spent against god see if we're talking about our physical health a vaccine or a medicine is to preserve our life for a long time and i'm choosing between life or death right especially if it's a vaccine of an illness which could kill you but for a spiritual illness, the stakes aren't life and death in the same way of the body. It's life and death of the soul. Where I could be someone who lives a long life in this world, but has no recognition of God in my heart. Or I could be someone who lives that same length of time or even a short amount of time. But the difference is I know God. I become one of the awliya of Allah, so one of the friends, one of the close ones, those who are muqarribun. And because of that, I gain something that I didn't have before. So on this point, um, the Imam says uh, in a different section that sins خطايا, for you is like an unruly horse on which the rider no longer has any reins they're not holding on to the reins of the horse anymore and so the horse could jump and jump into hell and take that person with them. They've given up control. However, as for taqwa, if you have it, it's different. In this taqwa, the rider has the reins in their hands and they are in control of those horses. So what does that do for you? So that they can take you and take the rider towards Jannah. That's what it's for. Now, the path is the same for both of them. 
the horse is going in the same direction or it's going to go for the same length of time. There's right and there's wrong. And there's the people of both right and wrong. But the difference for both of them is that one is going to be a front and one is going to be in behind. So the Imam says, Historically, he says, wrong has always been in the front. There's a picture of a chicken and a chicken. And historically, he says, um, good has always been behind in the past. And he says, it's not going to change anytime soon. But what will change is that the one who rides tries their hardest to hold on to the reins of this horse. So whatever time me and you have on this world might be limited, but the best we can hope for is to gain control of our lives. And that's what taqwa does. We choose to immunize ourselves in this way. Okay. So stage one is you recognize that you're not well. I'm not, I'm not well. I'm sick and I need some help. I'm riding this race and I want to get there safely and preserve my soul on the end of the journey. So I reach God in the same way that I was when I arrived, innocent and pure. But in that gap, when there are problems, what I need to do then is to cover myself in some protection. That is when you come to stage three, is when you take the vaccine of taqwa. Now it becomes something which immunizes you, where now that you have accepted God and you're going through the various steps of purification of taskiyah, now I can go back into the world. I can confront the same sin or the same world, and I'm not the same person. I'm stronger now. I have in me a shield which guards me from those very same sins which would have destroyed me before. But because of the work that I've done and because of the efforts I've taken, I have become stronger. I've become immune. For example, Imam Ali Islam says, um, in a different part of the Masjid Balagha, A'lamu, Ibad Allah, no, O followers of God. Inna taqwa darun hisni aziz. Taqwa is like a, a the tr literal translation is like an aziz house, a, a special house, but what it means is a fortress. Taqwa is a fortress. And sin is like a weak, crumbled house. Now you choose what house do you want to go in and what house do you not want. That house of the sinners does not help its people. And it is not something which gives security to the one who actually takes refuge in it. But as for taqwa, if you choose it, it is something which cuts off the sting of sins upon you. And it will take you uh, It will take you towards your final aim with yaqeen It will give you that peace of mind you always wanted That you were lacking That I wish I could follow this religion With yaqeen, with peace of heart, with certainty Well, taqwa is that very same thing Which will take you there And it makes you now like a strong house Like a fortress Nothing can break you, nothing can phase you In another part he says If you choose to take this vaccine of taqwa who actually accepts this taqwa knows something. Uh, it's something which will help you if you make it, allow it to help you. Like if you are given medicine and you don't want it or you don't take it regularly, for example, it won't really help you. And you'll say, why am I not getting better and better? But you're not taking your medicine in the right way. But the one who accepts help, which is always the first part of improving, accepting improvement, the one who does this, for them, taqwa becomes a choice, a choice which strengthens and purifies them. And now they start feeling themselves becoming stronger and stronger. And if you want to make this point really clear, in 7198, the Imam says, in the taqwa, taqwa Allah, dawa'un qulubikum. It's a dawa, a medicine for the heart, having taqwa. Basirun umyun af'aditkum. It is something which becomes a sight for the blindness of your spirits and the ailments of your bodies which you have, it, it cures them. Now, I want to pause here for a quick second and make a point about, um, <clears throat> about taqwa. We're not saying that we were born with sins, okay? This is something which we have in some other beliefs. Um, in Christianity, you have the idea of the original sin that we are all born with, in which we believe, which we Christians believe that they need the sacrifice of Jesus in order to purify them of the original sin they're born with, which they inherited from Adam and Eve. We don't have this mentality in us. A child is pure. A child is innocent. Imam Sadiq says you are born with a blank space in the heart. You're not born with uh, sins that you are accountable for from the beginning. But what you are born with are two forces which are always governing your behavior. The aql and the nafs. Now a person can choose what to follow, but we're going to find ourselves slipping upon making mistakes. 
And it's in that harsh self-reflection, you see that I did this to myself. I made a certain mistake to myself, which I shouldn't have allowed myself to get that far. I shouldn't have got this far. I did this to myself. And I have this choice now of what to do about it. Do I accept help in this medicine or not? And Nahj al-Balagha is almost like a reminder to us of what happens when you do accept help. You become better. You become stronger. You can deal with those issues more. In a, a hadith we have, um, with taqwa, the Imam says you can turn your sleep into wakefulness, meaning you no longer want to sleep at a time when you can pray. And you pass your days with it. You pass your days with taqwa alongside you. You keep it with you. That level which we are seeking is a very... It's not even that hard to achieve. You just have to choose it. Follow the steps. Step one, I know I've got a problem. Step two, I should accept that taqwa is a solution. Step three, I immunize myself. I do the amal. You know, whatever it is I'm not doing, whether it's if I'm not praying on time or I'm not reading Quran or I'm not having this iman, I do the things I know I should be doing. And then I find myself being purified inside. One of the points I wanted to, that Shaykh Mutahri makes, which I'd like to make now, is about freedom. Something we are told and something which you see around you is if you don't take the vaccine, you lose the chance to visit certain places or you are not allowed to go into a certain room or a different country, for example, like you can't because you've not got that protection and you lose your freedom. Disconnected to our current situation with the pandemic, Shaykh Mutahari writes years ago that the one who takes an immune, uh, one who takes um, a vaccine and becomes immunized becomes free. But not the freedom of the body where you can choose to go where you wish. Their soul becomes free from attachments to sins. Where you no longer feel the need to be subject to that sin or that pleasure or that person. You're free from them. And that's what taqwa does. It frees you. Taqwa, what it really does for the individual, it, it makes you free from any subjugation to any externality. You link with God. There's nothing except him. There's no deity worthy of worship except him. And Imam wants us to reach that level. And that's why the third point of when you actually take the vaccine is you do the work. You know, you, you go to that pilgrimage, you, you do the amal, which we're talking about, um, which we're not talking about today, but which you know, you know what we're lacking in our behavior. You know that God wants this for me and I'm not doing it. When you actually do it, there's a promise from God that it makes you better and it makes you free. So step three of this process is you take the vaccine of taqwa. You actually accept the help which Islam offers in the form of its various um, actions, its fiqh, its rulings, its akhlaq, it, the examples of the prophets, examples of Ahlul Bayt, um, you know, the book of God, the Ahlul Bayt. You actually follow what's been offered to us and you see the results and the results have been promised to be immunizing. Okay, that's stage three. Uh, anyone want to ask a question or comment at this point of anything that was mentioned in the past? Okay, step four. Sometimes when you take a vaccine, it's not enough. You need a booster or you need something which tops up what you already have. Or you need a reminder, you need to get a message from someone to say, go and take your next jab, okay? Interestingly, the same thing's found in our literature. Why is there a reminder? Well, we're told that every single prophet was come with a single mission, which was to improve the conduct of the human being, the behavior of the human being. All our faraid come from our behavior. And as Ayatollah Amini writes in one of his books, that the single sole aim of the Anbiya was to open up your, and to remind you to use your aql, use your reason for the sake of good and choose goodness in you. And then there's Allah's prophet who is Khatam al whose role is Bashirun wa Nadiran. He's come to remind you and give you good news and glad tidings. In, in, in that situation, they're here just to remind us to use what we have around us, remind us to take that shot of our vaccine. And if I add to this, in our traditions, we are told that we have to boost taqwa the same way you would boost yourself with an immune, with, with, a, with an immunization. In a sermon 195, which is the one I actually said, could you read? So we finally got to the sermon, which we're interested in for today. Amali says, I'll seek about Allah with taqwa. I advise all of the believers to have taqwa Allah. Um, if you have this taqwa um, and you have uh, this piety of God, you will find yourself towards salvation. And then he says, 
and you'll be attached to it, to its rights. You'll be attached to it. And you'll keep yourself attached to it continuously. You'll not forsake it. Um, it will guide you and keep taking you to a place of safety. You know how watan means home, coming from safety, which can also mean country. Watan here means to have a place of safety. But he says you have to keep yourself attached to it. Keep attached to the rope of God together here. Keep attached together for the right of taqwa. Meaning don't let go. Don't think that I said la ilaha today and I pray today. Tomorrow is not guaranteed that I'll stay on this religion. There's no guarantee. And this idea that we are continuously topping up our faith with reminders is why we have Nahj al This book really is to remind us what we already know, but in the beautiful words of the Imam. You and I know we have to have taqwa. We hear it all the time. We know we should have faith. We know to follow Quran. We know Ahl Bayt's words are more important than the words of anyone else. We know these things, but we forget. And we forget in our actions and our amal. And the more we forgot, and for the length of time that we forgot, we allowed ourselves to do things that were against Allah without even knowing it. And sometimes, in some brief moments, we realize. And when we realize and shine the light back on us, that's when we see that, oh no, I need to improve, I need to have some activity. And it's in those moments that taqwa becomes that solution for us. But that's when you don't stop. You don't listen and say, I really agree with what the Imam is saying. Imam Nashim Laga sounds beautiful. No, no, now we go and actually apply this as motivation for that amal I know I need to do. Either that wajib that I'm not fulfilling or that mustahab which I know can be beneficial but I'm just not doing for whatever reason. No, I have to do it now because I need to improve. I'm not going to allow myself to be still when illness comes and slowly takes and eats away at my body. So why am I allowing that to happen to my soul? Now one last example. So that's someone 195 and I hope that's why I set it for you. Just that little segment if anyone read it. Um, and the last example the, which we have on this point about that you need to continuously top up your taqwa comes from the example of clothing. So when you have clothes, which you wear, if they're nice clothes or if they're any clothes, if they're for work, if they get damaged, you replace them. If they get dirty, you clean them. You don't allow them to remain if you have a change of clothes. Your libas should be something which is continuously changing to reflect its need. In Surah 7 verse 26, we read, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, wa libasun taqwa dhalika khayrun. And the clothing of taqwa is much better than that, yani than the clothing of the body, the clothing of taqwa. And in the same way, you and I must change clothes, we must change our um, relationship with Allah to grow. And taqwa is the name of that link to God where I'm continuously remembrance, remembering Him. If there's a break in that continuation, I've got to go back and do that work and see why am I not calling Him the way I used to when I fill in the gap with. Uh, whatever was lacking but i get my booster i get my i get my added um jab that i need to take me towards the finishing line i get that from god somehow and in getting that i find myself going towards success okay and that's the fourth point that's the fourth section which is that we need a booster to make this firm we don't just stop we renew with something and we renew that thing is with taqwa uh, and that's it really Those are the four stages of taqwa As discussed by Shri Mutah Actually he doesn't make these points clear as four I've gone through his readings and, and put them together in this way In which we have A process by which I recognize Number one, areas I'm not well Number two, what's the solution? It's taqwa Number three, I actually do the actions which are required of me Number four, I keep topping it up And then I find myself going towards God In the path of Ali ibn Abi Talib as written in Nahj al Okay, now I will pause and I will say uh, for a last time, if there are any points, any questions anyone had or any reflections, what do you think of taqwa while reading this and what are your thoughts about this topic? Uh, can I, Abbas? Yeah, of course, Bismillah. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I think the example that you gave uh, of the vaccine is an excellent example. Excellent example. And uh, because we can relate to what's happening around us with this uh, topic of taqwa. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, someone mentioned to me some time ago that if you are on a path of taqwa, one of the signs is that you're not repeating those guna that you have done pre previously. For example, if I decide my, myself that although I do namaz, but 
I've not been doing namaz of wali waqt. I was doing it, not doing qaza, but not of wali waqt. And if I decide that I do that, and if I keep doing it of wali waqt, then I, that's one of the signs that I'm working towards taqwa. And uh, um, it's, uh, it, it, I mean, it, it, it's like I said, it's a protection. And uh, we, we, just because we decide that we are going to follow taqwa doesn't make us muttaqi overnight. It's going to take a long time and uh, we have to work towards it. On one hand, we have to stay positive in our mind uh, because Islam and uh, all our Imams have given us so many, so many examples that um, do, don't be uh, sort of uh, uh, now meets from, from Allah. Uh, believe in him that although you have committed sin, you didn't say, you didn't start to read namaz until you were 30 or 40 or whatever. But if you try to make yourself a better Muslim, better, better person now, have faith in Allah that he will forgive you. So because some people, they're all sort of negative, negative, negative. So have faith, be positive, do your best, but do it sincerely. I mean, I was listening to a very short speech of Imam Khomeini uh, a couple of days ago. Uh, although it is in Farsi, but with the Urdu translation. And uh, if you like, I can send it to you and, and whoever wants to uh, have it. Could you put it on the Zoom I'll... chat as well for anyone who's not um, got access? Do you have it with you? Or I, is... I, 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 but you can, you can put it on Zoom chat because I'm, I'm not uh, that sort of IT friendly yet. <laughs> so, so, so basically, uh, Imam Khomeini, I can't remember all, all of this, speech, but he said, uh, being an alim, ilm, ilm can take you to jahannam. Taqwa can take you to jahannam. Mm -hmm. uh, whatever, you know, everything can take you to jahannam. But if you have taskia, taskia means uh, you audit your own doings. You know, what you have done, taskia nafs. You know, you, you must have heard it many times, I've heard it many times, taskia nafs. So, if you audit yourself, then that will save you from going to Jannah because just having ilm is not a guarantee. Just doing ibadat is not a guarantee. If you if you are not honest with yourself, what's the point of being, you know, uh, doing the old namaz, roza, hajj, zakat, everything, and then having a double standard in your life? So it's, it's quite powerful speech, but provided you try to understand the meaning of what he's saying. Uh, so I, I will send it to you and you can put it on, on, on uh, Zoom chat if you like. So yes, I mean, basically what we need to do, I mean, I'm, I'm talking about myself, I need to open my eyes and see what avenues are available for me so that I don't end up, end up in Jahannam. Mm. And one of the avenues is uh, Taqwa. And, and, you know, again, you know, I keep saying this, uh, but thanks to you that you have brought lots of things to my attention uh, that uh, I have taken more interest in different things, in, you know, mainly in Ajit Balaga, and, and trying to learn something. And, you know, inshallah, Allah will help me. Inshallah, and, and all of us for our journeys, um, and it's all from the words of Muhammad Ali Islam that they become apparent for us, these realities. And like you said, we have to take responsibility, all, all of us, no matter what age we come to this path. You know, Imam Khomeini's section, I'm not going to comment on it because um, he's, Imam Khomeini speaks for himself. So, uh, but on your earlier point, on your earlier point, that a sign of taqwa is or should be that you're no longer repeating the same, the same problems, right? So... Or doing the same sins. Let's take it back to the example of a, a doctor or in medicine. If you went to a doctor and said, I have this specific problem and I need medicine and he gave you a certain medicine and it wasn't working for 30 days, you would go back and say this medicine doesn't work. But when we have a spiritual problem 
like my du'a is not being answered or I'm not hearing a, um, I'm not having that khushu in my heart. I'm not enjoying my prayer or um, I'm not able to cry or, or something like, you know, um, I'm not able to solve this issue in my heart about this, uh, this theological problem, whatever it is. And we hear from Mimbar or from someone, Imam has said this hadith, they've told us this, read this du'a or whatever. Let's say I do it for 30 days and the issue doesn't improve. Why don't I go back and say, okay, it didn't work. What was the problem? Like taking responsibility for our souls. In the same way we would do for our bodies in a doctor, I'd say, excuse me, you gave me this medicine, it's not working. Can you up the dosage? Can you give me a different one? Because I have the same issue. The same way, excuse me, uh, Agha, Ahlul Bayt have said that you should have a, a uh, salat as mi'raj of the mu'min. My salat feels like I'm rushing between one meeting to the other. Can you give me a solution, please, that I can do to improve my namaz? Now, if a person takes responsibility for themselves and takes themselves seriously, they will regard their spiritual progress as no less important than their material health, their bodily health. They, if anything, the spirit is much more important. But why are we so satisfied to not see taqwa as this dynamic thing you keep boosting? Why are we so satisfied with so little is the problem. I'll give you another example. If a doctor was to diagnose with you continuously with something which is ineffective for your body, you'd say, that doctor is not helping me. I need to go to someone else, right? So if you find yourself at a certain level of spiritual growth and the scholar who you are always listening to, maybe he's giving good reminders or the mentality of the people who you're around is, is the same. You'd say, well, these people are not improving my spirituality either my friends or my company or or the place I go or even the scholars I listen to like I'm not benefiting from them so why am I not saying that I need something better and, and looking elsewhere our journey should not be stagnant we're supposed to stay still we have to keep moving to keep acquiring more and more knowledge and taqwa by being dynamic like this way it's something which is not just you get it once you continuously keep topping it up and filling that void inside of you with Allah in a, in a meaningful way is the answer where it's like yeah, it's not enough just to to do lip service. In fact, um, in the first point I mentioned about when there's a gap, there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a kind of this emptiness inside you which you want to fill, right? And we fill it with sometimes with all sorts of da'ud which feel like we're filling it with something worthwhile. We're always busy in our schedules. Why? We're always scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Why? We're always uh, you know, talking to more people or making new new friends. Why? Because there's something emptiness we're trying to fill. But the problem is we looked in the wrong place. What we wanted to fill it with was there every day between Isha and Fajr for Salat al-Layl. It was always there every morning to the Dua al-Ahad. It was there every day to go and give charity and take involved and take responsibility for your community. It was always there, but we looked in the wrong place for our spirituality. And the problem then is why didn't we, why didn't we realize that I'm not growing and benefiting and developing? And so taqwa in the words of Ali al-Islam is to really take responsibility for your soul. And, and like you mentioned, uh, Anwar Kala, I hope that everyone does it for themselves, um, without a doubt. Uh, do you have any other questions or anyone else who wants at this point to mention a point which has come to your mind in reading Nash Balagh or in listening to this, or maybe an issue which you would like some clarification on? In listening to the sermons or speeches, was there any particular example of the Imam which you liked if you're listening to this or which... Um, you want to pay attention to that. I really like the way the Imam describes it like this, or this is helpful to look at it. It would be good to know what part of Nahj Balagha you naturally relate to. So is there any part of the sermons I mentioned which you find particularly interesting, for example? But one little thing I want to share. Yes, please. Uh, try to re you, are the, to you are the... The standard bearer of the Wednesday group, Anranka. So, <laughs> you know, you know I, I, I feel bad. I feel bad that you know I'm the only one who's speaking, and no one else is, and I don't want people to think that you know I like to speak too much. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, please. Um, uh, I, I'm just, uh, someone said something recently, which which uh, I like. He said that we are too much aware of what we do, what we wear. Uh, what we, you know, how we, we behave in this society because what will people say, you know, uh, if my size is 16 I'm, I'm, and I'm wearing a 17 collar shirt, uh, what will people say? Uh, you know, that, that's a very uh, petty example, but yeah, we are so much aware. But what we do, don't, what we lack is the courage which was shown by 
all the prophets, all of all, all our imams. Uh, Prophet Ibrahim had the courage to stand against, uh, the, uh, you know, Firon, and he also had the courage to answer the call of Allah. Hazrat Ismail had the courage uh, and the trust to say to his father, you know, follow Allah's uh, uh, hukum yeah. and and uh, you know instructions. So we don't have. Uh, well, we'll, uh, again, when, when I use the word we, um, I, I, I'm, I'm only uh, talking about myself. I, I don't have the courage to tell the doctor that, look, your medicine, this medicine is not good. Give me something better. So, some people will just keep on taking, hoping they'll get better one day. But they don't have the courage to go and talk to the doctor. Yeah, and they will, we live, don't and have they will the, die a very ordinary life where they did not gain much in terms of spirituality. They gained lots exactly, of material wealth, but they didn't get anything exactly. much more than that. Exactly. So, so I, I don't have enough courage to go to a Morana and say, Morana, you, you said to read this dua for this purpose. I'm doing it for like one month. Nothing is happening. Because I, I might feel that, or I don't know what Morana will say. So basically, uh, the more we have confidence in ourselves, mm -hmm. and, and uh, uh, in, in, the, uh, in the time of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we have, we have so many examples that people came and asked him question about the smallest of the smallest things exactly and he he, he never and the sahaba was sort of saying yeah, you know get this person out of the mosque you know uh, how, how petty he can be but prophet Muhammad said no no question is petty and exactly. it, it, it's about sharia it's about stuff let him or uh, you know let him or let her ask the question so similarly we mm. should have enough courage to ask whatever question because in, in, in all reasons, I'm, I'm not about the religious environment, in uh, you know, other environment, they say a person who asks a question is, he may sound silly for one minute, but the person who doesn't ask a question will, will be silly for the whole, you know, rest of his life. Yeah, Because true. if, if, you know, what, whatever my age is, um, if I ask a question, if you think, oh, Anwar Uncle is so old, he doesn't even know this question, but you will answer it. Once you answer it, then I'm done, you know, for the rest of my life. I know the answer. So I should have that courage to ask, and I should have courage to go back to the Morana. I should have the courage to go to the doctor. So... And to add that the place we get the courage from is not really in myself, and it's not even in the scholars. It's not about how great they are or my questions. Do I believe fundamentally that Quran and Ahlul Bayt are relevant to my life? Like, do the words of Ahlul Bayt actually matter? Or are they slogans that I enjoy, but they don't mean the realness to me as everything else does? If I decide to myself that this religion is something which is just lip service, then I'll live my life just like the way you mentioned, where we just go through place to place and, and I pick up something, there's something there, and I don't really think about it deeply. But no, if I take Ahl Bayt seriously, dead serious, where the Imam says, Saloni, Saloni, he means ask me anything. He means it. And when he says, I have more knowledge of the affairs of the skies and the earth, it's not just words. He genuinely can break down for me every single level of these Samawats from him until the Arsh of Allah. If I believe that and I take him seriously, then if I have an issue in my life and the Imam has spoken about it, then for sure there's some need for me to go back to the Imam if it doesn't work. Why else would he speak about it? Why, why does he care? Unless there's some benefit for it. And similarly on that, Quran. If this book is just belongs to the past and it doesn't mean anything, what, what's the point of it then? But if this book is dynamic and alive and continuously teaching us, and some ulama say that every generation learns something new about Quran based on the new, the new time, the new orf, if that's true, and I take it seriously, I'm not going to be content with a weak form of Islam. I'm going for the real thing. I'm going for the true essence of this faith and the place i get my strength from is i believe that these sources are real quran is haq and ahl bayt are haq and i go back to them now if someone wants to tell me what's in quran or relate to quran or ahl bayt okay i'm going to question them but it's not about them anymore it's just tell me what what does the imam want from me what does quran think about me as in what is my where do i fit into its narrative these questions are important questions and on the other point about about no question being too small we have pages filled with the most random, minute, idiosyncratic, uh, subtle questions the imams answered with true differences, like, like such fine, precise things that the imams have answered on. We have the imams speaking about issues 
which we are not comfortable speaking about to each other, <laughs> which they were, and they spoke openly and honestly, the language they used about um, features of life, about uh, relationships, about politics, Ahl Bayt just spoke truth. And people who went for them with that mentality where I just want truth, they got it from them. And we have to be like that. And unlike someone's mentioned in the, in the chat, thank you, Uncle, for, for being courageous and asking any questions. Um, and thank you for that last question. I hope that the answer is, inshallah, to some degree beneficial. Is there anyone else who would like to add anything um, or any reflections or questions that you may have as well before we close? Any, anyone want to add any thoughts about this section of Nahtra Balava? Okay. One, one very, very, one very small point. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. With, this is the last. That, close us off from the discussion today, inshallah. Inshallah. <laughs> that um, when when people say, "Oh, I went to the majlis and Marana was really great," you know. So, I I ask myself, what did I get from that speech? Yeah. If he were, he, he may have been a very great uh, orator, but if I didn't get anything from that majlis, I have no right to say it was a great majlis. Exactly. One of the great, great speech. That's it. Yeah, it's true. I, I, that's my case. Yeah, our, our expectations should be a little bit higher than just good oratory when it comes to knowledge of Ahl Bayt. Exactly, uh, exactly. The, the the gift inside should be more impressive than the packaging on the outside, you know? Absolutely. Um, I, however, I'm welcoming all gifts on Eid, so please uh, send them my way, inshallah. Now, um, thank you so much to you, Uncle, and to everyone listening. I hope it was beneficial, inshallah. That's the end of the book club today. Um, we have two more until we close. Today was the eighth of our book club. So next week, we're going to continue and look at the topic of um, Irfan in Nahja Balagha, Ma'rifa, and the path of the wayfarer. For that, um, today was beneficial also on the YouTube channel um, of Monthly Reflection, which is not on here, but I advise all of you to go there. We had a discussion yesterday on Zuhud, abstinence in Nahjra Balagha, what it means to abstain from this dunya. I, I gave this for a different group yesterday. Please find that video if you want more information, because that will help us for next week, which is on Sermon 229 of Nahjra Balagha, on this idea of the spiritual wayfarer using the message of Ali bin Abi Talib, to almost walk in his path towards Allah in the spiritual, uh, mystical, esoteric way that he does. So please do that, inshallah. Um, thank you, Sister Nadeen, for adding the, um, the YouTube channel. So please watch the video there to catch up if you're interested in this topic a bit further and subscribe to the channel, please. And next week, we're going to look at Irfan in Nahjra Balagha in the words of Ali bin Abi Talib, Sermon 229. But that's it. Thank you so much, inshallah. Take care. Eid again to everyone. Um, I hope you are enjoying and uh, remember this in your du'as. And um, two more, inshallah. So we will see you. Can't wait for next week, inshallah. Take care. And as I said, Eid al-Barak to everyone. <laughs>